Be advised, mature content ahead. This podcast is brought to you ad-free thanks to the Legion of Demons at patreon.com slash N-O-T-L-P. If you like what you hear, there's much more at patreon.com slash N-O-T-L-P. Join the Legion. That's patreon.com slash N-O-T-L-P. And now the show. How do you do? Just a word of friendly warning. I think it will thrill you. It may shock you. It might even horrify you. So if any of you feel that you do not care to subject your nerves to such a strain, now is your chance to... uh, Well, we warn you. Welcome to Night of the Living Podcast. I'm Freddie. Amy's here. Yep. Andy's here. Hi. And Kelly's here. I got to tell you, man, I'm staring at this rated R in front of me mm-hmm. on on the uh, what the trailer that you're going to play. And I just, I feel like they should have formatted the pain with like the description. Uh, I think they should have center formatted that. I don't disagree. <laughs> it doesn't look right. Yeah. Well, you know, I think that's I'm the glad. way they always look, though, right? I'm just saying that should have been center formatted. Back when it originally was created. I'm glad that we've started the show with a visual discussion. I know. On Thanks. an audio podcast. So, uh, Kelly. Yeah, yeah. Well, this, Kelly. Is a preview, this is a preview of my graphic design pet peeves ah, uh, yes. spinoff <laughs> podcast that's going to be coming out. <laughs> if you watch Babylon 5, Kelly, if you want it's gonna graphic be design pet peeves, <laughs> it's going to be called a don't be Photoshop. <laughs> oh, a uh, don't be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, this series of podcast theme is staff picks. Mm-hmm. This week we have Andy's staff pick, which is Woo! Strange Days. Woo! And, uh, spoiler these alert. Are stra- these are strange days, aren't mm-hmm. they? They are. Super strange. And uh, Amy will be reviewing Body Cam. Yes, sir. And these two care. movies have stuff in common, which really is do. not planned. <laughs> yeah. Just a coinky dink. Um, Patreon. So Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash NOTLP and you get, can get some stuff there, whether you remember or not. But if you choose to support us, we really do appreciate that. Very much so. There is um, a new Origins out, which mm-hmm. is a doozy, I think. It's a doozy. <laughs> Uh, there is uh, Topicana. If you haven't listened oh, to Topicana, yes. that's where we we ask these fun, thought provoking questions of each other, and it's a good time. This uh, is a good time. Real. I love listening. We get real. <laughs> we get real. And uh, last, this most recent one was what What have you done that you were certain you would never do? And this upcoming one, Kelly is posing the question: uh, What crime we we could we <laughs> would we commit? Right? If if it's basically purge situation. It was legal. It, it, it would be legal, just that one instance of the crime, right? And why would you do it? What it, would it be and why? So if you want to hear our thoughts on that, that's coming up Wednesday. Yeah. Do you want to hear what kind of weird shit we want to do that we're not allowed to do but would do if you let us do it? Yeah. <laughs> My answer involves shit. Your <laughs> Andy's answer may surprise you. Your imagination should be running wild right now. I'll tell you one thing uh, I wouldn't do. Storm the Capitol. No. no. That'd be a that waste. I would never. Uh, that's not illegal, though, apparently. Oh, apparently. Can, I am white. You can just so. do that. You're white. <laughs> I don't disagree. In fact, they'll open the doors for you mm-hmm. and walk them mm-hmm. in. <laughs> well, I think you have to. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't even know what I was going to say. Oh, don't forget to put on a costume, though. Yeah, it's and a off, disgrace. And, and, and take off your shirt. I'll bring all of my uh, Mickey ears that I have from my various sound, travels to Disney World. Try to sound as stupid as possible whenever you see any media outlets uh, on camera. Try as hard as you can to look like, uh, you know, you you are not. Um, well. well, Susan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, listeners who are in other countries. Oh, they know already. It's, it's everywhere. I just want, like, you to, I want to say this. This shit's 
fucking bananas. This ain't how it always is. I mean, it's kind of always this way, but like not to this level. I haven't slept like a normal person for four years. Um, like I haven't, I don't understand what to do with myself half the time right now. I am, I am doom scrolling Twitter. This is, this is where we are as a nation. Would you like me to read this tweet? I just came across. It's an article link and it says the true story of how Kylie Jenner's favorite lingerie company went full QAnon. <laughs> this is where we are as a nation. Poor Kylie. I knew the Kardashians would take us down eventually. <laughs> like we, I, I started this week already to just be deep in the Kardashian uh, Kanye West divorce news. Oh yeah. Just to, just to ease my troubled brain. And it was taken away from me. Uh, the ability to focus on that. He got, he got all crazy this week. And that's the biggest tragedy of all, isn't it? Like there's, it is. there's allegations <laughs> that Kanye West is hooking up with Jeffree Star. I mean, guys, I have, I can't be, I can't think of two different things at one time. And oh, I wanted and to focus Am on that. Amber Rose warned us she when did. she tweeted, when she hashtagged fingers in your booty ass bitch. Yeah. <laughs> We knew about Jeffree Star all the way back then. Oh, thank you, Amber Rose. Thank you. I'm out of thank touch. You. I don't know who Jeffree Star is. It's okay. You don't need to. I'm just saying. I just long. I long for that. <laughs> you long for the days that fingers in your booty ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> fingers in your booty ass. And put a finger. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. Friday. That was an appropriate <laughs> use of that. <laughs> I am <laughs> at my wit's end. That's how every newscast about this uh, story should start. Wah! <laughs> Tonight at 11. Oh, oh my God. Whatever I was, wa whatever we were watching last night and it was from MSNBC. <laughs> I think the guy was drunk as shit. <laughs> He was like stumbling, like he was angry. He was just an anchor. I didn't recognize him. Maybe you guys all recognize him. I don't because I don't really watch news like that unless it's a specific thing. And he was talking about like everything that went down and he was like really obviously angry. And then he would just slur words <laughs> like where it just, he sounded drunk. And I was like, I think this guy might actually be drunk. Because yeah. he is like worked up, mm -hmm. but he's an anchor and <laughs> he's like, he seems like he's having trouble reading aloud. Uh, it was just weird. And you know what? I Another bad thing about this, this whole thing that's going down at the Capitol, they're making me watch cable news and I hate watching cable news. It was the first time I'd watched live news since I don't even know it's when. Like, I, I don't want to see commercials about you know how pets need my money the yeah ASPCA. in the oh, arms oh. of the <laughs> every day oh, an animal wow. is abused <laughs> God. and i i don't want i hate seeing all these commercials about plaque psoriasis is that yeah. bit, is it so moderate to severe moderate, moderate to severe oh, wow. <laughs> if you have moderate to severe plaque psoriasis Try endocrine. Oh, da, 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 da. Ask your doctor. I think, it's true, I think the thing, that I, I don't, I need the story that the guy tased himself in his nuts till he had a heart attack and died. I need that to be true. It uh, is true, think, even though it's kind of debunked, but it's don't true. Don't take it away from me. I need that. It's all, it's like the thread that's keeping me together right now. I need that to be true, and I need to see the video, and I... Somebody I'll, can fucking I'll deep fake it. I'll score the video for you. Oh, yeah. wow. And you can say, Amy, oh, zap, zap. Amy, that's wow. Schadenfreude, and that's not nice. And that was a human being, and he had people that loved him. Fuck it. Wow. Freddy, turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> we still have the lady that got trampled to death. That, and now they're really happened. now they're trying to tell me that she was like a recovering addict, and I know recovering addicts, and I have a lot of sympathy and love for people trying to get themselves out of the hole, and they are vulnerable. And I, but but I want, storming the Capitol isn't the thirteenth step. I know it's not the thirteenth the step. There is a point. Listen. We're I don't want just, to think of them as human right now. Ultimately, Later. we're all just beings alone on this planet. And like sometimes 
you, yes, you're right. Maybe some of these people do deserve sympathy. You know, they, everybody has problems. Everybody has it rough. Every, everybody does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But in a society, like, <laughs> there are certain, like, again, like know your audience, don't take that shit outside. And, you know, unfortunately when people do this, even if, even if the reasons are beyond their control, they still did it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Jeffrey Dahmer, not to, I mean, I'm not trying to make a linear comparison, but there are a lot of things to be, I, I, I have sympathy for him as a person, but like, yeah. I also don't have, he, he had a lot, there are a lot of things about, he, he was truly incapable of controlling what he did. I, I yeah. absolutely yeah. believe that. Um, but he can't be around people. <laughs> so like, and you can't like, just be like, um, it's, the, you know, I, I forgive him. I mean, somebody can, I'm just saying it's okay to be like that dude. It's like those rallies commercials, man. It's just, it's just the way it is. Like sometimes somebody just does some shit that you it's gotta okay eat. to be like, I'm glad that guy died. Yeah. At least that's my opinion. I, that's how I look at it. Like if somebody really does something fucked up like that to a whole bunch of us and it's like, we all knew not to do that, <laughs> then kind of fuck you, dude. I'm sorry if it was caused by whatever, but. But for anybody who's like, well, Amy, believing in, in, in weird theories and conspiracy theories like this man tasing himself and his nuts and dying of a heart attack. Mantase sounds like a really gross condiment. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not going to do anything about my uh, want to believe that this man did this. I'm not going to go tase you're people in the balls. This information. You're not. No, it's again, it's you're just saying something <sighs> and feeling something that you don't even 100% feel feel right so don't feel bad about about expressing hyperbole i'm just delighting in it you you don't feel bad about bad people bad things happen to bad people those were bad people at the hill yeah but god i mean if if a video exists (laughs) i need it i need it so bad it'll heal me and i can't wait to talk to my therapist about it this week about my need to see oh, Amy, that man chase himself. Heals. Revenge <laughs> never heals. <laughs> <laughs> but it might make you feel kind of good. <laughs> for a minute or two. It's that it's it's like what that day that it happened and then the next day. Like I kept texting you guys, fuck around and find out memes because it was just making me laugh so hard. And it made me feel better and uh, whatever. I didn't hurt anybody. It was no, well, you know. But there is a part of me that feels guilty and I'm trying to don't, like, don't I know yourself. I want to put this out you, to you, everybody. You, out Cause there. you you're it is cause you have empathy, Amy, and these yeah, people don't, I know. they would not give a shit about anything that happened to you. So why did you give a shit about what happened to them? Yeah, no empathy can coexist alongside uh, thoughts like that. It's fine because again, you're not doing anything. Your actions to me are what matter the most. Right. They're not the only thing that matters, but they're what matter the most. And you, you, you're keeping your inside thoughts, you know, on my podcast, just, you're just venting. I'm venting. Some, you yes. know, and some people might say, well, that's not nice or it's insensitive and that true or not doesn't matter. These people storm the Capitol. Fuck that. Shit. Do you feel yeah. like there's some cheesy ass office manager out there who uh, treats his entire staff to, um, to coffee and they, and they have a bitch session that he calls his venti venti sessions. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. You know, uh, you know, he's writing a book, a business book, where he's like, y- you know, for the price of eight venti coffees from your local Starbucks, uh, you can get uh, your team really engaged. Uh, you get them in the room, and they they got a and the twenty ounces key. This is this is in my book. If you read the book, the twenty ounce portion, you can't do this with a grande. A grande is not enough time to really get to know your team. <laughs> a venti's perfect and you can go larger than that you could but that's that's the thing then they're they're leaving they're pissing half of the meeting away <laughs> it's a fine line that you have to walk or shitting <laughs> you know yeah or the you know shitting or pissing you want to loosen their lips not their bowels is what i'm saying and it's all here in my book <laughs> the venti venting method Are by you coop scott? cooperson you're michael scott aren't you friend <laughs> He can be. Do you have a seminar? Can I sign up for a newsletter or a- <laughs> it would do. Do you know how many times I've like said, Oh, like in a in a, in a crowd or with people, oh, I had too much coffee today. I gotta go to the bathroom, meaning I have to pee. Yeah. But when I'm peeing, I'm going, Oh God, they think I'm shitting. Hurry up. 
so they don't mm. know you're shitting because you didn't mean that and it's embarrassing for them to think you're shitting. Hurry up so this they is, don't know that you're brain. shitting even though you're not shitting. It's just, it's my brain, Freddie. Remember when it's I had that shitting. nitro coffee and I immediately <laughs> had to shit, but we had to get on a trolley? <laughs> not a trolley, the streetcar. Same thing. Isn't it's it? not a trolley. It's it had rice all over I thought they were it. the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think every trolley is a streetcar. But, uh, but not every streetcar <laughs> is a trolley. You. If you know what I mean. Wink. Oh, you had to, sh- you were sweating. That streetcar is a trolley. You did a little shuffle across <laughs> Fountain Square to the bookstore that's not there anymore. Oh, I blew up the it. bathroom. I, and you know what? They, it was one of those ones where you're like, you're like, you fart a little and you're like, I just sprayed at least like uh, some oil. So you and then the bathroom, didn't you? And then you get in there, you're yeah. like, and you're like, oh, thank God that did not make it. To my right, you clothes. look down at your underwear and yeah. you're like, Whoo! It must be I like when women sure think it's they're just, pregnant. It's, it's just trapped. It's it's just gas. <laughs> but it feels wet. I know what you mean. And then you yeah. get in there and you're like, oh, I'm bad. I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> you're okay. But don't let that fall. Don't let that become a false sense of security, people. I had sweated through all my clothes. Like, take it for granted either. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, is it raining out? I'm like, uh-uh. No, no. Where's the bathroom? <laughs> did you did you do the um the butt clenching walk, Freddie? Yeah, <laughs> walk, we were walk, together, walk, Andy. Over. Do you remember? We had to shuffle. <laughs> I feel like the butt clenching walk is like the most tense. It, it's like when Quint is describing waiting for his turn uh, <laughs> after the Indianapolis down, he's like, that was the worst waiting for my turn. I feel like every step is like, you're like, each step brings me closer to them just involuntarily unclenching and me spilling <laughs> coffee diarrhea down my legs. And I chose today to wear my khaki shorts. <laughs> it's going to light. <laughs> Here's some relatable what? content, man. Yeah. Nitro coffee and that cold brew. <laughs> I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> it destroys me. Uh, man, it opens you right up. If you have an obstruction, <laughs> maybe try nitro coffee. Yeah. It's serious shit. Yes, listeners. Women <laughs> shit. Maybe that's what uh, the people at the Capitol were trying. They all had nitro coffee. Oh, they're they're trying, they were all going, trying to get to the toilet. Honestly, the some of them were. Up the hill. <laughs> and that guy carrying the podium out was just trying to hide the big greasy stain <laughs> on his <laughs> pants. Oh, he was going to flip it over and shit into it. <laughs> oh, <whoa. laughs> like his like bridesmaids. You guys, feces was smeared on walls and stuff. Oh, no. Yeah. That's not the worst sure. thing that happened, though. So yeah. True. Like that, that's why they brought zip ties to the Capitol, because they needed to tie up. <laughs> The garbage bag's full of shit. They don't you, to, to get out. Do you think that one guy who had the zip ties who was there with his mom, she had the bread bags? <laughs> the <laughs> empty they, bread bags to put, they, his, put his underwear in? <laughs> they, the rally served themselves some of those old trunk, 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 <laughs> trunk steaks. I sort of say trunk steaks, but they're the same thing. Yeah, uh, they sewed them out of a trunk. Yeah, because they were uh, they were stored in a warm trunk. <laughs> they're like, oh, nature cook it. We are invincible. <laughs> <laughs> God's gonna so smite yeah, that bacteria. If the if Rust. the left if the left wing media really got the story out, then we just need to, they just need to know that they just needed a shit. Oh man, I've had to pee that bad that I would storm a castle and threaten the yeah. vice president, not a castle. <laughs> I would totally do that. You know what I'm saying? Oh man, they were talking about shitting at the Capitol for weeks leading up to this. Yeah. So Trump was there. He's like, if you want to use the toilet, <laughs> you gotta buy something. <laughs> so we pay your taxes let us shit in your capital <laughs> this, if, this is our this is our bathroom you know That's he's right. he's talk. he wants to go to the alamo now <laughs> trump to he's like, looking for peewee's bike you said the basement he's going to the alamo Be- because of course he is <laughs> this is the goddamn world we're in this is absurd i haven't heard this is he gonna live there <laughs> No, it's it's part of his him and uh, David Bowie's ghost loser <laughs> lap. They're they're gonna make him take the tour first, so he gets to see the ghost of Jen Hooks. Yeah, yeah. like this Adobe. is this is the world we're in. Ah, I want to scream all the time. No wonder I'm not sleeping. No wonder I uh, am enjoying the devil's lettuce right now. It's all I can do. I'm having some no, cheese curds. He, he was talking about what he how he likes his pie, Amy. He likes the Alamode. He just spelled it wrong. 
Well, that that's not out of the question either. Remember the Alamo was Alamo. <laughs> now Trump has been banned from Pinterest, so I think we're all going to be okay. Oh, good. But I don't know. Oh, how I'm will right. I know how he decorates his basement now? It's covered in fucking gold. I need to know what recipe he, recipes recipes he's like. Peanut so butter now, like, jelly. Google something and it comes up on Pinterest and I can't get it. I won't have to be mad that it's Trump stuff that I can't get. Right. Pinterest has never yep. made sense to me, but yep. that's just me. It's me a chaotic either. maze of like wonders and I terrors. Get it. I just never understood when it was explained to me, you know, what's like when you have, you know, you have a bulletin board and you, you just put things from magazines and recipes and stuff up there. You know, when a serial killer kind of no, has a manifesto, that, but also <laughs> I don't care about what other people like. So I just, it has, it is of no interest to me. No Pinterest to you. You know, no Pinterest to me. Um, yeah. <laughs> the so... comedy stylings of Combrink and Morris. Oh. She's a lady, mean a lady who does com- comedian, <laughs> and that's when She's they coined the term. <laughs> She's my favorite lady comic, comedian. He was looking at a poster for Annie Oakley. <laughs> Are you comedian Andy? <laughs> comedian Andy in the Temple of Doom. <laughs> oh, that Anne is so funny. Oh, just, She's a comedian. Build, we should build an actor. Comedian Jones. <laughs> <laughs> hey, she pushes her sleeves up and she's in front of like a brick wall, but there's like treasure behind it. Oh, I get it. Comedian to Joan, Indiana. Yeah. yeah. Have we have we gone off topic? Do you think people understand what's happening right now? No. Um, if I didn't have you boys, if I didn't have the listeners, if I didn't have the hardworking meme makers of the internet mm-hmm. right now, I don't know where I'd be. Oh, and my dog is. You'd, you'd be storming the capital, Amy, if you didn't have all this stuff. No, I, I, I needed all of you to get me through. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's painful. It's traumatic. It's insane. But you know what? It's hydrostatic. Yeah. And be, probably the last word, if you support these people, fuck you. Yeah, fuck all the oh, way Oh, yeah. I, I can't imagine... Uh, who 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 would? I'm just you know, cover my bases. Fuck you. Cover those bases. Yeah. <laughs> fuck you, dude. Yeah. Fuck off. Just in case you fuck didn't you already dude. know. Fuck you. <laughs> I've been I've been doing uh, my my current form of self care is to reply to um, like Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio, Nikki Haley, and stuff on Twitter, and call them monsters and tell them to fuck off or eat shit. Um, and it's been really nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it felt good. They ever reply? Oh God, no. Uh, be funny, right? But it just makes me feel yeah. good. If but you did that to Trump, it. he might reply. No, he can't now. He can't. Well, and I know not now. Uh, <laughs> He's a marshmallow monster man. See, Amy, Marco you're Rubio. The, you're doing it a healthy way, Amy. You're not mm-hmm. actually uh, going to the Capitol and you know attempting yeah. to kidnap these people. No, and kill I, them. I did it in my uh, lady, uh, white lady from the suburbs way. I wrote a very nasty uh, letter to my uh, representative, Steve Shabbat, who objected to the Pennsylvania Electoral College vote. Um, they should oh, make a letterhead that has the speak to the manager emblem on That's it. That's me right now. Just the lady with the hard haircut and the... Um, and it's just like, but it's nice. It's embossed. That part is raised. I haven't gotten to Rob Portman yet. Um, I'm, I'm sure I'll work on that tomorrow and giving him his own sternly worded email. Mm. Amy's good at that. Yeah, it's very helpful to the world. No, but you're good. You're, you're, you do a great job of just putting exactly what you need in there. Well, what are you going to do? I admire you. Oh, and this guy I'm fighting, he does. I mean, we just started fighting on Facebook that was being mean to my cousin who was saying, you, these were Antifa thugs. The Facebook. physical fight is still to be scheduled. I'll fuck some shit up. He'd be determined. He needs anyway, to be determined, determined. I just, I just I, I'm full of anxiety and dread. Yes. But I'm also full of laughter over how silly some of this shit is. In a, in a silly in a dangerous way. Yeah. yeah, some guy died because he tased himself in the balls. We'll, we'll always have that. <laughs> that lady got Paris. shot wearing a Trump cape. <laughs> That's fucking funny. Yeah. <laughs> It'd been funnier if it was someone in a Superman costume. That's fucking funny. And that guy that shot her, man, I've oh. seen every goddamn angle of that. And that guy's good. Uh, 
I just want to know what why these people were climbing the fucking walls. How there's stairs right next to you, bitch. Didn't one of those? Didn't that guy die? The you one they why? made the like Super Mario uh, music behind. They were waiting for this forever. They wanted to climb the walls. They could have opened the doors for them. They still would have climbed the walls. This is, I think, the whole thing. Um, can I get political for a second? You may. I almost never do. This is your show, man. But I keep hearing like this idea of people have been like these people are brainwashed, and I I actually have to disagree with that. These you need people, a brain before you can watch it. Watch I it. think these are people who've always felt this way. They now though there is someone in office who speaks what they think who speaks what they want to hear. And so they come out of the woodwork. I'm not saying that misinformation doesn't play a huge well, role. Well, yeah, Kelly, the- what you're saying has been proven. Like they, yeah. um, they, they say basically he, he normalized it enough that they were able to coordinate with one another. Yeah. And, and all of the misinformation, all it does is justify what they're doing. They don't even have to believe like anything that comes out. It's, it's because they already believe it. Yeah. So I, I don't know that anyone had to be brainwashed. I think this was what they were waiting for all along. And now they just never thought it was going to happen. Yeah. yeah. They were just waiting for a chance yeah. to climb a wall. And they were finally, <laughs> they wanted to, they wanted to storm the Capitol, like the, these people that for them, it was like an action movie. It was, they, they were the fucking sons of the revolution. You know, I, uh, I was about to say, I would never try to climb and storm. Um, but if they were successful, if they truly got our free and fair election overturned, what was I going to do? You know, what would have been my move? And yeah, I think I would, scary, in that right? case, I'm going to storm some fucking trailer parks. <laughs> Come on, bitch. And I'm somebody whose parents lived in a trailer park when she was born. And I can say that I am white well, trash. Well, anyone can say that. All right. I don't know. What do you guys think? Should we move on? Oh, before we do two things, <laughs> Esther, I love you. I'm glad you're feeling better. Yes. Thank goodness. Those empanadas look delicious. Sue, I love you. And I'm very, very sorry about your father. Yeah. Really. And if you need anything at all, I will give you all the hugs and kisses. From um, America, you're in Canada, and I can't go there. You won't let me in, and so I can't do it. <laughs> and you, and you, Probably you rightfully have to say, so. You yeah. used to have to um, socially distance still. You can't yeah. kiss people anymore. Oh, yeah, there's still a, 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 a fucking pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. 4,000 people are dying a day. Um, no, it's it's fine. Oh, and Freddie, you have to uh, grab that. James sent that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I had this on my microphone, so I wouldn't forget. And then you forgot. And I forgot anyway. Uh, we got a nice card from James and Angela. Oh, thanks, guys. They're and awesome. uh, it's, they, it's a We Survive 2020 card, which goes to, sh- I mean, like, it's such, I do love the way this is unified uh, us enough that greeting card companies make cards for it now. It's not a company. It's actually a friend of Fozzie's and uh, Tina Sea Monster. Oh, yeah, that is a so great cool. artist. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't uh, realize that was a Tina Sea Monster joint. Mm-hmm. Ooh. J- I, James, I enjoy anytime you comment on anything or anytime we engage, I uh, it's always uh, thoughtful and, and uh, well said. It was a very sweet thing to and, receive uh, in the mail. And here's the prior thing. to the dumpster fire carrying over to 2021. And here is this, they say in the card uh, to the NOTLP crew. Thank you for well over a decade of quality entertainment. We've never met, but at this point y'all feel like a family. I hope 2021 brings y'all everything you hope for James and Angela Dama and also Winnie and Jose Kitty. Oh, thank you Aww. guys. Well, so Kitty. far the year has not brought me that, but that's not your fault. Yeah. yeah, little had you known when they dropped that in the mail, they're like, doo, 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 doo. oh shit, they are storming uh, the Capitol. 2021 is like, hold my beer. Yeah. <laughs> I heard, uh, was it Colbert phrased it as hold my fear or somebody had a pretty funny one or hold my year. It was hold my year. That's the one. I I believe you're probably right. I feel like I've... I, I didn't mean to draw that much attention to myself with that comment. I was just trying to. <laughs> oh boy! Oh, I feel, whole, feel too seen right now. Stopped and they're staring at you now. <laughs> Essentially, this cheese curd looks like a penis. Well, you were yelling because <laughs> no one could hear you, and then it got quiet at the same time. Exactly. I was freaking like, freaking like out penis? a little. 
Yeah. <laughs> if uh, you need something to distract yourself, I just want to reiterate, I don't know if I've spoken about it at all, but uh, The Real Housewives of Potomac is a, it's a beautiful, beautiful reality trash show that makes me happy, but it's not that trashy. And the, I think these women... They're, I think they're they're good women, except for one of them. Well, wait till they get to the episode where they storm the Capitol, Amy. Well, but I, <laughs> I, 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 something happened at the reunion. Uh, Robin said, none of this is appropriate to any of you. I know nobody cares. But she said, I am so glad that Juan Dixon is not here right now. And I just want to say that I have enjoyed <laughs> it has been repeating Whoa. in my brain a little bit since all of this nonsense happened this week. And I know nobody knows what I'm talking about. But it made me laugh, and I would encourage everybody to in, uh, enjoy that. And then the the chairman of the board at OCP brought out their new law enforcement robot at 209 to show to the Real Housewives. Yeah. And uh, they were like, well, what does it do? And they are like, well, stand up and find out. And mm -hmm. then the 209 was like, drop your beaches. Wrong uh, state. That's, yeah, that's Georgia. Atlanta. Well, they were having, they were eating pizza. Drop oh your apple. We fucking took the Senate, and that we couldn't even celebrate it. You yeah, have ten seconds to comply. That was boogie awesome. boogie. Shut up. <laughs> that's a bad at two hundred nine. Sorry about. Drop your peaches. Like they have peaches all the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> that's a. That's what they eat in on the Potomac. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> it's the same I way that we carry that cheese. It's the same way that people from Cincinnati carry cheese coatings with them all the time. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> they do. We have to indicate where we are by what we eat. We just have hand, handfuls of chili. Remember, we said if we ever yeah. did the uh, Real Housewives of Cincinnati, yeah. you turn around with a handful of like <laughs> of real runny it's got, like chili. <laughs> It's running down your arm. And somebody else could have a handful of Montgomery and barbecue sauce. Yep. <laughs> Just sausages like a fucking boa constrictor. Beer in their hands. Could somebody have like a, a big mm. floppy La Rosa's pizza and just like be all over their shirt? <laughs> That'd be me. Just ve like La Rosa's veggie pizza all over my body. <laughs> All over my that sounds face. like R&B lyrics. Olive, olives like clinging to my cheeks. I won't say which. Mm. This got too spicy, Kelly. All right, let's oh, move it, on. Well, you know. All right, Are we all done right. here? We probably should yeah. be. You want to move on to the roulette? All right, cool. Hello, boys and girls. It's time for straight to video Russian roulette. What the hell happened to the street lights? Grab the big light, check the north side. Put your hands in the air now! Ah! Have you had any trouble relating to people? No, I can't even explain what I saw. I'm going to recommend you return to active duty. Come on, man, it's a neighborhood store. We're not going nowhere. I don't need these hands above your head. Oh. Is that complaint? 18 out of 7 code 2. Requesting backup. Proceed with extreme caution. I'll take it from here. It doesn't make any sense. They found their guy. Just leave it alone. Look, I need you in or out. All these things that keep happening, they mean something. Someone's in here. All right, everybody. Welcome to my review of Body Cam. You can find it on Amazon Prime. This Thank is, you. This is a not... Okay. This is a movie with a very interesting premise. Mm -hmm. Mary J. Blige is mm -hmm. a cop. She's been uh, suspended for a while because she hit somebody, a civilian, um, because her kid died and she wasn't dealing with it well. And uh, so now she's back on the streets 
Bad and dick, yeah. she's got this rookie partner and uh, they encounter one of their fellow policemen's um, like they they find his car he's gone um, they don't know where he is there's blood everywhere and teeth and they can't figure out what happens. And they find him later, like, strung up and, like, eviscerated. Um, but she's in his in his patrol car trying to get his laptop to work and see his body cam footage. And she sees, um, like, some clips, um, some grainy moments. And it looks like this woman that he pulled over, like, something happened where he was supernaturally like whipped around and killed and blah 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 right did he did he pull over the wendigo again oopsie it felt just like one of those x files cold opens yeah it, had, it was the cold open of the movie Basically, yeah. yeah and then it comes back to it from the main character's perspective but it felt just like the x files to me at that point right and throughout the movie you get a little bit of body cam footage so it's like this mix of regular movie found footage you know Mm-hmm. which I thought was a really interesting premise. Let's do a supernatural ghost story with body cam footage. Mm-hmm. Um, but the movie doesn't, it doesn't want to elevate its story at all beyond just kind of a basic level horror movie, gotcha. um, which disappointed me. But the more I think about it, there were, it, it's charming enough that if you were like, hey, I want to kind of throw on a ghosty movie and um, I, I wouldn't mind a little social justice thrown into it. Um, it it's charming enough. I'm not going to spoil it. It's, aggr- it's, it's aggressively OK. It is aggressively OK. And part of the problem that I had with it, as much as I love Mary J. Blige, she is a Acting. very good singer. <laughs> not. She she wasn't really able to bring the gravitas that the character in the movie demanded of her. I was yeah, I was yeah. wondering because just in the trailer, I felt like I could pick up sort of the <laughs> yeah. labored line readings. That's I'm never like, a good sign, you know. It just it's fine. So she there's these frequent moments with her coworkers where she goes back to work as a cop, where they're like, "You over the death of your son yet?" Like she's very boy twice. Yeah, yeah, like and they're like. Well, maybe it bothers you so much. It's been six months. It's been six that, months. That you should be over your dead kid. In movies or TV shows where someone's grieving, and someone always says something like that, like, it's been a year. <laughs> and you haven't blown me since your entire family was murdered on the same day and their corpse is defiled. You, you, it's yeah. been a year. You should be over this and blowing me again. And what's funny is they did a good enough job in the beginning indicating that she had a child that died and they didn't need to keep throwing in. Yeah, it was these weird things, but whatever. I don't care. It's like they wouldn't. They're like, you know, the audience is going to have a deeper connection to her uh, having a kid that tragically died because our, this other character here is in the same position and they can do this thing like, like the end of return of the Jedi it's like a script writer who's following like the uh, the Google Answers ten point like how to write a screenplay. Yeah, it was very. There were a lot of very obvious maneuvers, and uh, and I like what I do like. I think that's kind of fun. Take these, mm-hmm. Freddie. Freddie didn't think it was was couth. Well, no, for them I, to take uh, some of these um, kind of Black Lives Matter yeah. things and put them into this aggressively mediocre movie. Yeah. Um, and I don't think. I don't agree with that. I think that's okay to do that. You just recognize that this movie didn't do a really good job with it. But at the same time, there were still really good moments. Yeah. It was serving a, it was serving a ghost story and this, this ghost story didn't feel like it was serving the issue, but the issue was serving the the ghost story, if that makes sense. And it felt a little weird to me. I didn't know how to like, how I should, I didn't even know how I should feel about it. You know what I mean? So like yep. when I, when I was like, well, okay, I, I like, you know, when m- horror movies especially do that and they bring in social issues when it's one of those things where you're like, oh, somebody, you know, is seeing this and they're really probably getting a lesson that they're not even aware of type of thing. Right. This was more like, you know what, this is a stir of echoes with a template put over it with a, yep. with a skin, kind of like how, you know, in video games speak, I guess, like you can get the skin for your, your generic ghost story. 
And it, yep. yeah, I mean, but there were re- there was this great scene in a uh, like a convenience store, which I thought they did a really good job with, where these you know guys are robbing and fucking around in the in the convenience store, and the cops come in. It's very RoboCop. I think that's probably why I was yeah. thinking about a two hundred nine. And you have these kind of you've you've switched between body cam and what's happening, and there's ghosty things happening. I thought that was there were like they had some good visuals. It just was so mediocre in how it played out. And that well, last, they, this, it sounds like they didn't connect yeah. their themes to what they were like. It, it sounds like they wasted some opportunities. Yeah, to take their core idea and tie it to sort of the social issues they were using and make yeah. it sounds like like fred i mean obviously i didn't see it but if i'm if i'm understanding correctly it's like they used this social issue to justify why a ghost occurrence was happening but didn't right. necessarily use the the reason for the ghost to it wasn't yeah. complex enough it wasn't yeah. like yeah it didn't provide like enough facets to what they were saying that it was any more than just flavoring like current event flavoring so what i get sprinkle it on anything it'll taste like current events i get what you're saying with that that it's like uh like everybody knew going in that this was sort of a a a very bare bones b-level ghost story and they're like but we can take this like current event stuff and spice it up and make it seem more relevant right that's what it felt like to me Uh, it was your basic stir of echoes template or ghost story template i mean specifically a group of men conspire to cover up a crime is really mm. what it's about. Yeah. Um, and and you, oops, you made a ghost. Right. Oops. Yeah, if you don't, if you don't have protection, you're always yeah. going to make a ghost. <laughs> oops, you made a ghost. So you're going to be a <laughs> ghost dad. I, we got to do that for something. TM that. Oops, yeah. you made a ghost. Oops, you, you made a ghost. Can you also make the pamphlet, so you're going to be a ghost dad for me? <laughs> <laughs> what yes. to expect in there? Just a, a trifold was fine. Glossy. Glossy. I'm going to need a thousand of them. By Tuesday. So anyway, body cam. Uh, uh, you know, I I understand that we're shitting on it, but I do s- still feel like you know, if you're in for s- just some dumb fun mm-hmm. with a slight flavoring of you like X Files, yeah, watch it. It'd be yeah, a, it would like be a, a solid X Files episode, yeah. But Mary J, I love you, girl. <laughs> you 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 did your best. <laughs> You just, your eyes didn't connect with your words. Are you ever your dead son yet? No, I'm not. Uh, I'm not really, but I can work. <laughs> oh, oh, don't even get me started on the, okay, here we go. This is the part of it that was really fun. Oh no, here he goes. When she goes to the uh, morgue to view the body, there is this very specific trope that I didn't know, I didn't even realize was a trope until I was watching this scene unfold where I was like, Oh my God, I just saw this. And then I thought back and I'm like, I've seen this many times. She comes in and the, uh, she wants to see the body, yeah. but she's not supposed to be allowed to see the body. And the, uh, the morgue attendant is like, Oh, but I don't want to lose my job, but you know, you know, it's the, the little negotiations they do just to see the body. Right. But it was like very improv and they never oh. got anywhere with it. Like what he wanted and what she wanted. They didn't negotiate anything. It was just more him going, I really love my job. Hate to lose it. And her being like, but come on, you know, blah, 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 whatever. And he'd be like, well, that's a good point. But this, I need my pension. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this at least he wasn't eating. Time. Yeah. He didn't have the he sandwich. Have cheese sandwich. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so body. Oh, Freddie. I thought the trope you were going to say was like when she saw the body, she saw her dead son instead. Uh, you're not far off of something else that happens. Oh, okay. So we're, she sees you're kind of spoiling this. Yeah, so the, the, you know, it's too late. Okay. We've spoiled this. If you've gotten to this point, I'm sorry. If we, we well, shouldn't have spoiled Freddy, it. Freddie, this is my like, review. Yeah, I know. But it, then I, I was the one who made it spoilery, I think. You didn't, well, though. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. Andy hasn't seen it, nor have I. So... It spoils itself. It sounds like yeah. Well, you get a you get a very in uh, the moon indoor Ewok ghost sequence from Return of the Jedi, where Anakin and Yoda and Ben yeah. are there. Uh, They're all sitting around having a little dead yeah. Jedi powwow. Exactly. Uh, can I say powwow? I don't know. A dead mm, Jedi uh, yeah. meetup. And uh, 
the end of this movie has the dead two dead kids together doing the same thing basically they don't they don't sing yum nub, yum nub, it though. was almost volcano levels of ridiculous at the end <laughs> everyone looks the same <laughs> <laughs> but anyway it, it was very it was so it was it was like a very 90s feeling it was a 90s movie yeah all right body cam there you go body thank cam. you body massage. Massage. yeah thank you for the review freddie oh i'm mm-hmm. so sorry did i take over the review <laughs> mm-hmm. again he does this i'm a son of a bitch Such a man well you guys live together and you guys watch the movies together yeah. so it's yeah. inevitable that you know somebody bleeds over and I get excited when a new trope is brought up to my eyes. I feel like a secret door open, a door of perception, and on the other side is a trope you didn't know about. You broke on through. Like psycho strippers. All right. I have a jack-in-the-box. We're going to pass it around. Everybody's going to crank it, and we'll see who pops it out, and it has to do the next one. After they you crank ask, it. If you asked me when I was a boy if I would sit in a room in my house with two other men and crank it with my wife. Till it popped it. Till it popped. Until it popped it. I'd have told you. <laughs> what are you I hit a button by accident is what I would have said. All right. So Freddie's up first. I got, I got Butterfingers today. That's the second time I've hit that button by mistake. Crank it. Crank it. I mean, what button? There's no buttons. These things are really here. It's a big jack in the box. I'm cranking it. All right, Kelly, you're up next. All that damage to our fourth wall. Yeah. Oh, okay. Kelly. Oh, shit. Well, it's about time. <laughs> Pretty Morris. All right. Here's what you're going to watch. It's called Camp Cold Brook. It's on Prime again. Mm. You're going to be mad about this, but don't. It stars Chad Michael Murray. <laughs> Wh- which one is he? It doesn't matter. He's a jump dingle dorgy. <laughs> TV- I know the name. Oh. He played TV. He was poop. on... Um, one tree, one tree Hill. Yeah. And then yeah. he's been in some movies. That, that's okay. a lot of first names in his name. I don't I like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's going to assassinate it's three someone. first names. Yeah. TV producer Jack Wilson fears his paranormal reality show will be canceled. Desperate to increase the ratings, Wilson takes his filming crew out to investigate the legendary. <laughs> they bring in Ted McGinley. <laughs> the legendary champ. Champ. Legendary Camp Coldbrook, an abandoned summer camp <laughs> where a mass hey, murder. Champ had taken place decades ago. They soon realized they are not alone. Starring oh, yeah. Chad Michael Murray, Danielle Harris, Courtney Gaines. Oh, wouldn't it be spooky if like the ghost actually sang that Michael Jackson song? Like, and you're out and you're walking around camp Bo- Bogan, whatever it was. The and, director. And then they, they're like, we got alone. The director of the Funhouse and Massacre. Like, right in my ear. There you go. Applehead. We Thanks. like that. It sounds uh, well. At least I know who the cast. Like I know everyone in the cast. So yes. Michael Jackson's ghost. We all love him. Freddie, God. Would, uh, <laughs> I got in the garbage again. I ate something. <laughs> God, I'm gonna smack the shit out of you. Well, we'll all look forward to uh, to that review. Yeah, I feel like you're gonna hate it. But who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Maybe I won't. Knows? I've been. I uh, I've liked a lot of the last several, but you, know. you you could accidentally watch Camp Candy. I I love Camp Candy. Remember that show? I remember that show. I remember the theme song. Oh yeah, how did that go? Oh, I remember part of it. All I remember is at Camp Candy. So I guess I don't really remember the theme out. song. I just remember that part. <laughs> okay. But I remember it was a cartoon about John Candy and Grandpa. <laughs> It checks out. That's what you thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah. That's a small wonder. <laughs> you know, that theme of small wonder, we're like small wonder. <laughs> I do know that theme. Different strokes. I can't believe that Different. theme to camp candy said kept candy. <laughs> what? Did In you? the word at, at <laughs> camp candy. I can hear the music too. I just can't make it. <laughs> yeah, that checks out. <laughs> At the same time as the words. <laughs> All right. Oh my God. <laughs> Are we moving on? Yes, we should. All right. A 
Have you ever jacked in? Have you ever wire tripped? No? A virgin brain. Well, we're gonna start you off right. This isn't like TV only better. This is life. Yeah, that's a piece of somebody's life. Pure and uncut. Straight from the cerebral cortex. You're there. You're doing it. Seeing it. Hearing it. Hearing it. You're feeling it. It's about the stuff that you can't have, right? Like running into a liquor store with a 357 Magnum in your hand, feeling the adrenaline pumping through your veins. I can make it happen. I can get you anything you want. You just have to talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. I'm your priest. I'm your shrink. I'm your main connection to the switchboard of souls. I'm the magic man. The Santa Claus of the subconscious. You say it. You even think it. Yeah. Are we beginning to see the possibilities here? You know you want it. Oh, you nasty boy, Ray Fiennes. You're nasty. Ra- it's Ralph. Is it Ralph or Ray? It's Rafe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's R- Rafe. It's Voldemort. It? Yeah. I used to always call him. I thought it should be Ralph too, right? To be fair Does to us. Does it have a twin brother named Ray? What? Huh? Did I'll I make that up? I'll look it up, but I think you might have. I thought there was a Ray and a Ralph Fiennes, and maybe it's just because his name is Rafe. It's Did you Rafe. hear that popping sound? That was my brain. That was my how, mind being blown. I love how Kelly just invented a twin for Rafe Fiennes. Holy shit. It's Rafe Fiennes. The Rafe oh Fiennes? Oh, my God. So there is only one. Of, thank God, because I have been going around for probably the last 20 years Thinking that there were two Fines brothers, one named Ray and one named Ralph. I'm not kidding. We should this. write a series of children's books about them. <laughs> he is and he is not a twin. Some of the time, one of he them does. was Voldemort, and the uh, one of the uh, the other one was in Schindler's List, and like oh no, other movies. <laughs> is he in Schindler's List? Yeah, one of the guards. They, yeah. That's the where time. That's when you had both Rafe Fines and Liam Neeson, Liam who Neeson. I used to mix up all the time. They do well. They have a very similar vibe. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, yeah, exactly. Well, I'm really glad this happened today. This is a big day. You, it can, you've been telling everybody about these t- Rafe, these Fines twins. Well, I told and Elise. Uh, everybody was just when, like humor. Kelly Baron Stein or Baron Stein. Ah, uh, I always thought it was Baron Stein. Oh, you're so a third you one. Steen. You're well, a f- no, it's it's one of the two spellings, but Baron Berenstein, E I N, is how I always and thought it was. Kelly, I'm sorry you had to find out this way that Ray Fiennes doesn't have a twin brother. Oh well, no, it's good. It it, it frees my brain. You want it, us to you, freeze like, your is brain? It Ray or Ralph? Which one is in this movie? All those times. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna cut that audio out where you say "freeze my brain" and we're gonna use it when you die. <laughs> said freeze I'll be like here are his last wishes freeze my brain and they'll be like yep that's exactly how he said it and that's what he meant anyway freeze this thing for me i'm putting it in a robot in the future so andy tell us about your pick uh it, yeah it stars the the singular ray finds mm-hmm. <laughs> who doesn't have a twin nope. does not have a twin <laughs> Okay, I picked this movie because I have a soft spot for 90s tech tech movies. Mm. Uh, like, you know, this and The Net with Ooh. Sandra Bullock. Remember and that? Hackers. That was a fun movie. Hackers. Yeah. Yeah. This is yeah. some hardcore cyberpunk, though. Yeah. This is fucking awesome. Yeah, and uh, another thing I love is the future of the past, mm-hmm. even though we we lived this mm-hmm. through the 90s. But looking back on it, it's the, still the future of the past. Am yeah, I we're living it right? now. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's the past of the future of the past. Yeah. And it's only four years Ahead so into the future. Near. Yeah. It's the near future of the past of the future of the past. <laughs> exactly. It's the you're right. Exactly. The what Kelly just said is exactly what I mean. Yeah. But I just <laughs> like looking back on how movies thought the future was going to be, even though it was only four years ahead of when this was filmed. But it's just like uh, this technology that comes to fruition sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's I like to like, think of the things they rejected, where like they got their writers together and they're like, okay. 
Four years in the future. Let's see what we think is realistic and our audience is going to have buy-in. We need buy-in. These things can't be too crazy. Mm-hmm. That's what's great about near future sci-fi. Number one up here, these uh, wigs that let you record other your everything. <laughs> to be <'cause> everything. <laughs> they are. What's kind of sca- this is this is things that they are kind of working on. Yeah, like I just I was wondering. You think it's just because they really wanted to tie it into the year two thousand? It was an artistic uh, choice and not really a consideration for the science of it. I don't know. I don't know. I think uh-huh. it was just. I mean, I've, it's a very common cyberpunk. Thing. I mean, I guess if it was put further in the future, it maybe would have made somewhat more sense. But it also felt like they presented it as a tech that was sort of underground. Mm -hmm. um and not easy to get a hold of so clearly dangerous yeah so i it actually felt this felt i like this because it felt plausible to me in in a way that some sci-fi does not because i i like i said it just um a a lot of it is not only possible but has happened and then the 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 neural link stuff is is eventually possible maybe not maybe that way but it was the smartest of this genre that came out at that time because you're you know if you look at its contemporaries or things like tank girl and johnny mnemonic and stuff like that like this was probably the smartest of all all those movies well i'm gonna say something that's gonna blow everybody's dicks off i actually as as a cyberpunk movie and it just in general Listen, I love, I like Blade Runner a lot. I think this is a better cyberpunk movie than Blade Runner. I actually like this movie better than I like Blade Runner. Blade Runner always bored me to tears, so I'm on your your page, sir. Well, I always felt like Blade Runner is very style over substance, and it's yeah. a style. It works for me 100%. I really like that movie, but I think this is just a better movie. I feel like this written. and Blade Runner are are the same to me yeah. i mean they're hand it, in hand like well, they, they're, both noir, they're both noirs yeah well, cyber cyber noirs is that if that's a genre i could see is. this being set it, in that world even that, that's not would. beyond what they established it is basically again it's it, this is a, a genre this is like the william gibson yeah kind of that you know that's what cyberpunk was originally it was kind of mixed noir with this idea of jacking into the net or you know jacking in um, jacking so it to a net they are exactly <laughs> so like this the cuz bending you know, or funicello the <laughs> both together scissoring mm-hmm. jacking it to the nets jacking it to the nets jacking it to uh, a nets okay mm-hmm. stop to a nets i'm jacking it stop ready to two a nets i'm jacking it. <laughs> oh grammar there's a lot more conjugations to go strap in for any more um, but anyway i'm just saying yeah this is a, i mean th- that's why i love this it is such a well, perfect representation of a very specific this, genre yeah well this one takes the technology more seriously than other movies from the 90s does because i remember like those movies when you like logged on the internet it like it took you to like a physical space. You can see the internet. <laughs> yep. Remember They're like running, the hacker? <laughs> yeah. R- running down like hallways and it's like Google. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, you just see all the num like the the numbers like you know the zero ones like in your eyes. <laughs> like Wreck It Ralph <laughs> too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's how like the nineties e- approach the E Boy um, or what was it? Internet. <laughs> like like it was like a physical thing you can actually go into, but this one took it more seriously. Yeah. Uh, that's like uh, when you, if you ever played the tabletop game, the shadow run role playing games. Yeah, it's exactly shadow run. Yeah. Without Fucking the magic. Nerds. And I just want to say, like, I also picked this movie because of the soundtrack, um, uh, especially because it has um, songs by PJ Harvey. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's like one of my favorite John, like, eras of music like the 90s like rocker chick era like liz fair uh the breeders uh tracy bottom like that era i just love so juliet lewis Harvey did a great course. job with those yeah, songs i did. i said to amy i was good. like i would this is a band i would see you yeah, know i would have their albums great. if that was like a real band yeah. But that's well, a they are kind discussion. of a real band, Juliet and the Licks. Yeah, she she's she, yeah she was actually in the band, but it was just a different oh. approach of how she um took the performance of PJ Harvey songs mm-hmm. 
like she, she like made it very more obviously sexual whereas PG or, or like she was gonna take a dump there was that one yeah. where she kind of <laughs> sidled out and i was like it was like birthing in a field <laughs> position you know what when i mean she, when she like got down close to the floor she yeah. dropped it low yeah didn't you feel like she was about to take a shit i mean like yeah, juliette she, lewis has that edge to her where i'm like she could come out here and do something real sexy or something. She's going to be Allen all over the stage. <laughs> yeah. Is she, it? she had that nitro coffee before. Yeah. Isn't she a Scientologist? So like, yeah, unfortunately. I'm going to oh. temper my praise for Juliette Lewis. Oh, and yeah. I'd rather talk about Angela Bassett, yeah. who is also delighted me to fucking no end yeah. in this movie. And the cast is I love. So Angela Bassett and Ray Fiennes, I feel like, had really good chemistry. And oh, yeah. Both. Wait, they're did, I, both, did I misspeak? Uh, real pretty people, too. Right. Is she a Scientologist? Juliet Lewis. Yeah, she is. No, I meant yeah. Angela Bassett. Isn't no. she? She's not one. I no. thought she was. Where'd you hear that? I don't know. The television. I don't know anything. Oh my god. I'm not confident in anything I say. Take everything I say with a grain of salt. <laughs> You're a mess. Say that every job interview. A grain. Take a everything grain. I say with a grain of salt. You're gonna have to interpret things. I'm not a huge Ray Fiennes fan. I'm sorry. I think he's fine. I I like, I like him a lot. I really liked him in this. I liked him in this. I think anything else. Different Ray. Performance. What about his brother? Ray, I <laughs> Joseph Fiennes? Like in my weird made up thing, I always felt like Ray was the lesser of the two Fiennes yeah. brothers. Like he got less work. I felt like Ralph got more. Yeah. I actually hired a detective agency to find the L. <laughs> the PI. They're like, okay, what's the case? Was like, it, he was came it in, Tom Sizemore? He came into hired? my office with a, a bag full of greasy sandwiches. Okay. Yeah, look, a lost look in his eyes. I feel like Tom Sizemore is. I like Tom Sizemore. I, I understand like he's, he's a mess. I always yeah, feel like yeah. he's playing his actual self. Yeah, like I yeah, never he, feel like Tom Sizemore is playing another character. Like yeah, that's this just was, him. This was the same character he played in Natural Born Killers. It's just yeah. this, he plays sleazy and really his well life because because he is sleazy. I think. Yeah. <laughs> well, him and Juliet Lewis talk about sleaze like. <laughs> Yeah, like this is the kind of movie I'm surprised that <laughs> yeah, gross couple. what a gross couple, huh? <laughs> yeah, giggling, especially with the long, the long fried out hair. Well, and then when you throw uh, the sheriff of Nottingham's cousin on top of it, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. the bad guy from the crow, whatever. Uh, that I love guy, that is, guy too. Me too. He, rem- he there's he's part of that same kind of troop, like with Billy Drago and those guys who just yes. look evil. Agreed. He's always evil. Yeah. Almost. It, so I think he, I've seen him be good one time. But I can't yeah. remember what it was. But he was the lesser of like three ultimate evils in this story. Yeah. And he was. Uh, <laughs> you're like, you're like, I can clearly see him doing these weird things. Look at him. He's wearing a, an open kimono. Uh, <laughs> he looks like Chris Angel. Basically. <laughs> yeah. Well, if I, here's the thing about certain people. If I see like too many buttons on button, I don't trust you. Right away. <laughs> He's like Steven Tyler and Dracula and, like, and the guy from Rock and like, Rule, Marilyn what? Manson. Like what it's all about, the- yeah, what is it about gross people that love flo- flowy clothes? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Who who doesn't want to be comfortable? This this cast was kind of insane because you mm-hmm. also have Vincent D'Onofrio who also oh couldn't play like a dad in a heartwarming Christmas movie, like <laughs> unless it ended with him smothering. That's yeah. how good he is, though. I mean, he is always so intense. I felt like too that him and um, William Fickner, yes, William Fickner, who I was Fichtner. so delighted to see. Yeah, shit and those salad. Are, um, yes, yeah. those two. <laughs> are always so intense. Like those are like intensely physical actors. And um, I felt like they were kind of, especially because James Cameron wrote it. I felt like it was like an homage to the T 1000s. Like they're, yeah. they're cop characters. Like they felt like terminators. I was like that. Yeah. These guys might be terminators. Yeah. They were, they were know. inhuman really. JC wrote the thing. So it <laughs> felt like almost like, yeah. Like he was saying like these kinds of people are basically just, my, you know they're Machines. single-minded yeah you know yeah. hey did you did you not get why why i said what i said what what about what about um when we were talking about feichner william like the shit salad oh, i did not get the shit salad. have you seen drowning mona no watch that movie it's hilarious and he's he plays her like long-suffering husband yeah and and it's bet midler just came up on something for for me that really? just came up somewhere yeah it is like i think it's like a one of the great comedies that we that came out that decade um it's really really good they basically it's a murder mystery where 
uh, Mona's this awful person right. to everyone in town. This. Yeah, yeah, and they, they, somebody cuts her brake line and she drowns. And it's Bette Midler, and it is. It's they go back and retell it through all the different characters in the town. It's fantastic. Fun. It's fantastic. I love that. Yeah, I love that kind of thing. I will watch that. Yeah. One more uh, to add to this great cast list is Glenn Plummer, who he can be in anything ever that he wants, but he will always be the guy from Showgirls. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. In yeah. this, he's the rapper, the dance instructor. Yeah. He's Old the, Bloodfinger. Old Dancing ain't fucking. <laughs> and he uh he plays the rapper uh that is murdered. Jericho one. Jericho one. That was just well, a he, perfect name for that era okay. of rap. Here's the thing about like James Cameron. Like <laughs> he writes certain characters the way Stephen King writes characters. Oh, like this this old white man also writes yeah, uh black exactly. or people of color characters as somewhat of a uh Well it's just a uh, a, a very uh, they have a certain idea of like black characters and it's very exaggerated <laughs> yeah know, did, it was interesting watching this movie uh, being in the time we are in now that they are talking about the same motherfucking mm-hmm. things uh 25 years ago that we are talking about right now how the police are uh brutal to the black community. Oh my God. Yeah. And this is in LA, um, which, you know, the LAPD is what they are. Um, yeah. This was like only like, it was filmed in 95 or yeah. released in 95. So it was only a couple of years after the Rodney King right. stuff. So I think it was, was on their mind. It's yeah. interesting to the people who think that all this is just now coming up. Like, you can, <laughs> yeah. like, like this isn't even that it's a movie that, you know, that uses this. And uh, it was from like 25 years ago. Yeah. So, yeah, it's so true. Know. Like, I mean, history does repeat itself over and over and over again. Well, and we, the, and the ending is very, happening. yeah, the ending is very, has a rosy idea of how justice mm-hmm. works because we've shown that even in the face of overwhelming evidence, you know, certain people don't get convicted or tried, yeah. you know, stuff. So. Even with mm-hmm. video. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, you could experience yourself. You could get on a super wig. You could put one of these super wigs. <laughs> On one of these All Lives Matter people, and um, and then send them, and they'll experience the actual murder and rape and everything else, whatever these you know monsters do. And then they would find a way to reason out of it. Yeah. Well, it was the Antifa. Um. So help me with a little plot thing that was mildly confusing to me, and is still slightly confusing, and I know it shouldn't be. Okay. So uh, the kind of. The main story is there's a that Ray Fines is a is a dealer in these clips in these wire things like he'll get you and they're illegal squ- squibs right that they're called yeah. squids squids or squids. Yeah. Squids. Squids. squids um and he gets people to record for him and he, and he sells them blah 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 so he gets a um. He starts getting these mysterious anonymous clips left for him in various places. Mm-hmm. And they're of somebody raping somebody, but at the same time putting. Mm-hmm. Okay. So this person that's doing the raping mm-hmm. and murdering is wearing the thing to record it. Mm-hmm. So then and rape- transmitting directly to the one on the woman's head so that she is also yeah. seeing herself. And feeling and his rape. feelings of the rapist murderer. And her feelings, yes. Which, that scene where you watch the... It's very fucked up. It's fucked up. Um, and really kind of hard to watch. But, and then he gets another one later. That that was Tom Sizemore, right? Yeah, yes, it turned yes. out in the end that he was the one doing all that. Why was he leaving them for um, Nero? Because he said he, he couldn't help showing it to somebody, is what he said. Oh, like he, okay. it. like he couldn't help showing it. So that's what he said. Like there's a line. Okay. I kind of remember that. So I thought that was a little clumsy. This like, you have this one storyline and it's about finding out that the police murdered this rapper and we're trying to cover it up. And then you have the other storyline of what is essentially some kind of rabid serial killer rapist it feels well, loose yeah. the one wolf. i mean not yeah. that he's not a rabid horrible person but he wasn't a serial killer he yeah. just, well, that well, was you're right you're right you're right, you're right. He killed. i think it was kind of an excuse to show off the technology some more yeah 
Mm. Uh, because if you just had that one storyline of the the video of the cop or the that squib of the cop cops murdering that person, then you wouldn't get the full extent of how this technology works. I think. Yeah, it was really convoluted. Though. I'm trying to reconstruct in my mind yeah. exactly who was the mastermind of everything and why. <laughs> I think, I've forgotten. I mean, I know we well, just watched was, it. There wasn't a mastermind. Yeah, like, I uh, think it was just some... Tom Sarsmore just accidentally got caught up into it because he was helping Juliet Lewis out. Yeah, I it was think. a complete noir double cross kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this was like yeah. super beat for beat, like a, 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 you know, a detective noir story. Like it... But there you was know, also like explaining the double cross. What were you going to say? Well, I was saying that the timing was what I think threw me some ways. You have like your a storyline is the, the kill or the, it's the cop killing stuff, right? Yes. Is that the a, a story you think? Yeah. And then, um, your C story is the killer, the, the killer who is sending these taunting videos to Rafe fines. And uh, you, so you have that storyline going on and, but that's connect, they're connected in that the reason that those women had to be killed is because they were the witnesses or people who could blab about yes. being there when it happened. Right. So, I mean, it, it all comes so it, back. <laughs> yeah. It's not like he was a serial killer. He just killed the people that got in his way. Right. It was like misdirection. Yeah. Like I, it, it was I think they were trying, and I'm not saying it's not clumsy. It, it didn't. It didn't bother me. Like once it's I realized. Oh, now it was, I remember. It's because they didn't want to bring the cops into their stuff. Yeah, that was the motivation yeah, yeah. behind it all. It was yeah, all he, the cop was everyone's exposed. enemy in this in this yeah. story, right? Like, so they're the enemies yes. of. Uh, I'm sorry, I just totally steamrolled you, didn't I, Kelly? <laughs> no, no, I didn't. I was saying uh, the. Um, it feels like yeah. So they're like, okay, if they know that we know, we're we're. A, a not an acceptable risk they're going to come and kill us yeah so it's all just points in that one direction but if, if it feels more convoluted because you have to like really work to get back to that exactly like okay why are we here mm -hmm. well i think if you pull the threads too much it falls apart but yeah, i think yeah, everything else was strong enough to you you overlooked these potholes yeah yeah i didn't even think about um yeah i wasn't I wasn't in like worried about not knowing the answer to my question. I still enjoyed the movie quite a bit. It's a great movie. I, I, uh, I love the tech. It was so, and this is actually, I, I was, uh, listeners, I had told the crew earlier that, uh, Lisa and I have started, well, she's watched it once through already, but this inspired, uh, us now watching dollhouse, um, which is a super dark and this, I love, because this tech, like you record like your experience and someone experiences everything as you've recorded it. But, um, so like, like they showed, I, like you said, that was a good way to showcase like one way to use this in a horrible way. And then upping the signal to like blow somebody's frontal lobes out. That was actually one of mm -hmm. the scariest and most fucked yeah. up things to me was when you saw what happened when they fucking, used it to blow somebody's brain apart and behind their eyes it's just it's like all of your senses there's like overloaded so much it's just buzzing and colors and you can't even think but it's like you're alive and that's just constantly in front of you it was it was fucking terrifying and that guy tick the guy who got his brain oh, scrambled guy. the first one that's the yeah, guy but, who uh drove ferris bueller's ferris, yeah country oh, Cameron, shit, cameron's, yeah. cameron's dad's car yeah. Yeah. yeah when they do the star wars thing damn and the, the cast the on this yeah. yeah, he's great. He's a great character actor, Rich Edson. I want to talk about the car chase. Mm -hmm. Angela Bassett turned me on during that, and <laughs> it was such a cool scene. And like, it was a cool scene. The the uh, relentless blah, 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 mm -hmm. of the cops and them going in the water and shit. Man, that was so good. That was crazy. It's a great action movie. This is a really good movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. I would say I love this movie. Yeah, me too. You ready to commit? I'm ready. I'm ready to put a ring on it. Yeah. Well done, Andy. I agree. I love it too. The word Kelly always like, kept texting us like, this movie's intense. Yeah. yeah. Intense. I thought it, it was very it, intense. It was intense, even though it's like the runtime is like almost two and a half hours. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah, I think it, it kept long. up. It kept up the pace mm -hmm. uh, throughout the whole thing because it just, I like the world they built. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, it was just, 
just gross and sleazy. It was so grimy. This whole yeah. thing was super it, grimy. It felt lived in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Even and though I, it's like only four years from like 95, like 99, it's like, it's very, it's bleak. The yeah, way it is, they look at the word. The it world. is super bleak. And um, I also really enjoy, like, I really like the character development and the relationships and, and how they, they bring you into those people's world and who they are as people. Um, yeah. The they backstories they have real to me too. Yeah. It, it's a, I can't believe this isn't a bigger movie. I was saying, I think, I think there's some kind of beef with Catherine Bigelow for being a woman director. Cause her shit is not streaming everywhere. Yeah, there's some I, weird shit about like, yeah, I, I want, I want to blame James Cameron. I think probably. he's trying to uh, keep her uh, in check or something like oh, that. Oh, I thought they were, had a really good relationship. Is well, that not true? He cheated on her. And... Oh, but then they work together a lot after I their don't. divorce. This was after they were this divorced. This was after their divorce. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, so I don't know, but I do feel like there's some kind of weird Hollywood, like, uh, I don't even know why I feel like this. I just remember hearing things like this when she uh, got, you know, for Hurt Locker. Like, it feels like there is some kind of, like, I don't know about blacklisting or blackballing or whatever that word is, but so- something where she was not well-liked. And maybe it was because she's a, a successful uh, woman director. I don't remember. That should, but I was that trying to watch Near Dark a couple weeks ago, and I was pissed off because I can't find it. Yeah. Well, it was Wait, interesting which because one? this was kind Near of a, a flop. Dark. Yeah. This was kind of a flop. I think it was a Near Dark kind of a uh, a flop, too. They were at the time, but now yeah. they're, you know, I think both really think well regarded. The following, but, like, it was just interesting to see how long it took for her to recover mm-hmm. for her career after this uh, disappointment. Whereas like a, a male director, if they had like a movie that didn't do well, like they could just get another project right away. But this one kind of put her career yeah. on the back burner for a while. Which is too because, bad. Yeah. Yeah. She's a great action director. Yeah. That whole, yeah, that whole sequence with when they're uh, being chased in the limo um, by the cops. What you in my head i'm like a limo is not that maneuverable but damn she did it mm-hmm. <laughs> and then it's completely engulfed in flames and she's like i got an idea that was so <laughs> badass. Was really badass it yeah. was so I, uh, badass and i actually i i said while we were watching this that i i also because i can't help comparing their styles because her and james cameron do have sort of similar styles um it, in having like having these really big action set pieces, but I I think she's more in. I think she puts you more in it. Mm-hmm. I, she, I feel like James I think Cameron, she has more in common with Ridley Scott yeah. in the in, yes, that, in some yes. of the scenes in this. Um, but I, I just meant visually. Yeah, like I, I feel like she puts you closer to the action. Yeah, uh, she has a lot of close shots on people's faces. I think. Yeah, well, James do you Cameron know puts you further away. They had to create special cameras just to make this movie. Every yeah. time anybody from that circle of people is involved, they're like, "It's not good enough." Yeah. And we're going to do something crazy. And if we don't have it, we're going to build it. It's that Disney idea of, yeah. you know, just taking things and uh, making well, she it. Plus, yeah, she plus I, that shit. I, I think the way she directs, it, it's more visceral. You yes. can feel it more. That's what and, I mean like, by more like, intimate. Yeah. Especially like at the end when that big New Year's party <laughs> is building and building and building. You can feel the tension in the crowd. And oh, like yeah. The, the mob I mean, mentality and what's that, what could happen. You and know, th- yeah. And what, you know, uh, like, like Angela Bassett said, she's like, she said like this video is a lightning bolt from God. And she knew like what could happen if this, this got released and you can feel that tension of, especially with the backdrop of like, 19, like 1999 and the millennium and when everybody thought the world was going to end anyway. <laughs> And yeah. what was it what was interesting too, was the idea of it, it was still like, which is weird considering who wrote it. Um, it, it, it did seem to indict like white privilege even further by the fact that every time she talked about exposing this tape, like white people who were ostensibly on her side or not, well, just the one, but there was this idea of if you do this, it's going to start a war. And do you want that on your hands? And so it was like, from their perspective, it was like, you know, it needed to be done like the, the, that needed to happen. You know what I mean? And so even people who seem like, um, I don't know why I keep saying that. I, I know that, uh, what's his nuts said that, but I think the other two people that said that too, were not good. Anyway, the idea that she should not expose this racist act, not because it wasn't wrong, but because it will cause other people 
it will cause this big revolutionary fight right. that may occur, you know, with tensions as high. And she, do you want that on your hands? And it's like, well, it needs to happen. So yeah, like, it's one of those things like, why, why is that on my hands? I didn't do what's on the video. It, yeah. It's, it's, it's shifting the blame, shifting blame. Yes. to, to a witness for Thank witnessing. That's something. what I was trying to say. And that is like a really, it's, it's how most people cope. I think with, anything mm. you know they're that's why the phrase don't away. shoot the messenger exists yeah because they literally that literally literally literally, literally happens um but anyway i just uh that it, it, i thought that was a good um also extrapolation of like when when those two cops are like running through the crowd tr- trying to hunt her down to get what's on her tape and they just start blasting people around because they're so desperate and it's like it's like what we saw where they they're trying to stop something from being exposed about them by completely exposing themselves and it's like you see how the rationality is completely gone it's like well yeah they won't see that tape but they're going to see you mow down like 20 people in an attempt to stop this woman but that's what happens oh yeah and that's and what I mean. Time, that's, I was, that's what happens. And I was thinking the whole time, like how they were going to justify them shooting these innocent bystanders. Like they were like, they could just easily spin a story, like how these people were, they felt threatened or something like that. Yeah. So it, they felt they had to take them down. It was weirdly prescient. What was interesting. Yeah. They, they're shooting in the crowd. They're being terribly reckless in this attempt to try to get her. And when you know, she finally overpowers them and handcuffs them to a railing. The cops come, uh, the other cops, and they're like... The riot cops. The riot cops, mm-hmm. and they're like, get her. And they immediately start beating the shit out of her. Like, it's ex- they knew that would happen. This is kind of where I want to say the thing that was weird about cop uh, uh, body cam happening, you know, just happening to be the roulette and this being the main attraction. This movie answered my question like when we were watching body cam i was like this doesn't live up to i'm not it's not making me think i'm not taking away with a new found like desire to understand the world or anything like that but that did happen with with strange days a few times throughout that where i'm just like well there there it is that's the moment it feels real and it 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 planted a seeds with somebody definitely yeah yeah yeah, that was hard, but it was also incredibly cathartic when yeah. then the crowd breaks free and and over like overruns the riot cops. It was something that like honestly, if you've been frustrated, if you were frustrated uh, during um, the the protests that happened in the summer, uh, and you just you're like, I just want to see everybody overrun the cops. Watch this movie and just fast forward to the end if you don't want to sit yeah. through it because it is very cathartic. Yeah. yeah. But- at the end, I feel like, like I said before, it has a very rosy idea of the system working. Because well, I mean, it, I like the commissioner is like sees this video and immediately. And is like, we're says immediately says this. arrest these co- arrest these men. Yeah, and we but, learn in real life it's like three months later. We're still yeah. considering it. So well, like, I, it's a very I, Hollywood way of looking at how the system works. But I also think it's your fan. I mean. You, your fantasy of this can go one of two ways. Do yeah. you want to end your fantasy on reality, which is the cops make it out? And I know that some people want their movies yeah. to not yeah. have happy endings or not end in a way. That yeah, it's just looking back on it the way I, like, I, I appreciate the happy ending, especially after all the intense stuff we saw before. Yeah. But just looking at it from 2020 eyes. My fantasy like, ending does uh, involve yeah. Angela Bassett in the dress with the uh, oh, she the good. fucking garter belt she stuffed the gun in. That moment. Jesus but Christ. It's a, tra- it's a travesty that she's not a bigger star. Yeah. Agreed. She, uh, or- she's bigger than you would think because like Amy, I was like, where, where is she? And Amy was like, Black Bitches, Panther. I was Black like, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah but she like, works all the time. She's a supporting role, but like she should be a leading star. Oh, the yeah. The way that, mm-hmm. that Julia Roberts or like Sandra Bullock is. Right. Um, yeah. Because I can't, th- there's very few actors I can think of that have such a screen presence as much as she does. Like she, you immediately yeah. dr- are drawn to her as soon as she's on the screen. Right. The uh, this argument about you know should it have ended like in, with this rosy view of what the cops would do I don't know let's normalize the cops doing the right thing 
<laughs> Let's normalize yeah. authority doing yeah. the right thing when we can. Is, At yeah. least I can get it. Five two. So yeah. Is like, yeah. We hadn't been beaten down uh, with cynicism. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. You're listening to Cool Jazz in the evening with Amy Morris. His wardrobe at times was very offensive to mine eyes. I didn't like what it. it was supposed to be. Yeah, he terrible. tore it off though. Like no, he's he didn't. just they did pick I on think... him in the movie about it too, didn't yeah. they? I just I think he ooze sexiness out of this movie. Um <laughs> he's a sexy man. It's a grimy sexiness, but I get what you're saying, Andy. It was, there was definitely an eroticism and sexiness the whole thing. And if you're into it, if you pick up on it, you do, and if you're not into it, you you don't, but I do think his wardrobe was meant to be like, almost like, you know, the, the old, uh, pimp suit, you know, it is yeah. like, uh, oh, this guy yeah, is super think about into that. his clothes, but you find out again, he's kind of dirty. Like he's sweat, at least point out. She's like, he is not shot. He's so, he just put his clothes right back on. <laughs> he's like, and, uh, uh, Daryl from the walking dead. He would fit yeah. right in Greasy. at corks. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. I think when you and I think at first it's like you you when you're first being introduced to him it's like you're supposed to buy into what he's trying to sell you which is like he's like got this money and he's he's stylish and stuff and then you kind of find out he's kind of pathetic and he really only has these two two or three people who are like friends really only one real friend and uh and that he's just kind of grimy and and it's it's all for show you know and he's just this broken broken person um he's tiny he's toony yeah. as a and then oh go oh, ahead, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. i, was well, gonna I make just want to say like i just find it interesting they have this super advanced technology of the squibs but the wig technology hasn't caught up with no. the, <laughs> the actual technology because there are some dry ass wigs <laughs> you know i thought tom size where his hair was like stupid but I was like, oh, shit, it's a wig later. And I'm like, well, duh. <laughs> those are some thirst. Give, give those um, wigs a cup of water. They're thirsty. Oh, <laughs> you're just so thirsty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, boy. oh, and real quick, um, I want to give a shout out to just our friend Dustin Chisholm. Uh, he just wrote me a message like, I'm glad you picked this movie. Um, uh, he just said he his, uh, he just loved the character development between... Um, Mace and Neo? Nero. Nero. And he said his favorite scene is the uh, helicopter flying over the New Year's party. He just. Oh, yeah, that was crazy good. Yeah. So Very just cool. shout out to Dustin Chisholm. Shout out. Mm-hmm. As, yeah, like we just went through New Year's and you're like, okay, they were trying to create a, a like a pre apocalyptic New Year's celebration in this movie. And it's like, I just sort of saw one when nobody's on Times Square <laughs> and Anderson Cooper's <laughs> shit blasted. And, you know, I just think about the damn uh, ID4 scene with the lady on the rooftop uh, of the yeah. sign. I don't know why. Yeah. But that's where my brain goes every time. <laughs> well, Andy, well done, sir. Yes, uh, great, you. great movie. Thank you. Because I don't think I'm, it's not like underappreciated. I think it's just underseen. Agreed. I've, I've never seen it. And in fact, you know, Freddie was putting the disc in and, and he's like, Do you know anything about this movie? And I'm like, Is it about the future? <laughs> like, I have no idea. <laughs> I was like, Well, so I was, I was delighted. Do you agree that she would like Videodrome because she likes this? Or is that too deep? I, know, is that too deep too? I have oh. not seen. Video oh, oh, okay. Never mind. It's ba- it's very similar. Um, there's that new movie Possession reminded me a lot of this too. Oh yeah, Possessor. Or Possessor. Possessor. Thank you, Andy. Yeah. I'm not hip to how things are supposed to sound. <laughs> <laughs> so, Freddie, you're up next. Do you know what your movie's going to be, or what I, your selection is? My selection is I stitched together my own anthology movie out of selected episodes of the series Inside Number Nine. Remember, don't. You, you you only get like how long are the episodes? This is the same runtime as Strange Days. I All made right. sure of that. <laughs> I made sure of that. Inside number nine. All right. Inside number nine. The episodes oh, are if I you want to play along. Inside number nine. It's uh the very first episode, Sardines, which was great. It was the first episode I ever saw of the show. We were at my mom's house, you can talk about all and uh, it had it just came on that Shutter Live. It was really cool. Um, seance time is the second one. 
the devil of Christmas, which was like their, their, you know how they do Christmas specials on BBC. It was their version of that. Um, it's my favorite so far that I've seen, uh, once removed and misdirection. So, um, I think these guys, you text us all that. I already did. Uh, and I feel like these guys are like the modern masters of anthology horror, in my opinion. So it's going to be a five hour show next week. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a long one. (laughs) Bring a lunch. I've I've never heard of this show, Freddie. I have seen one episode of this show. Uh, my son's Colin Cole, uh, our friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Is it from like the 70s? It sounds like a 70s. No, story. it's a current no, show. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's oh, the guys okay. who did League of Gentlemen. And um, they, the same group who like, the same uh, big creative circles, probably like your Sherlock people. It's twisty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like Black Mirror-ish. It's right? Twilight, yeah, Twilight Zone-esque. Okay. It, it, this is, yeah, more old school than, than Black Mirror is. It's more about like human drama than it is about yeah. like tech or anything like that, but they don't, they don't limit themselves in any way. And it's one of the most ambitious anthology shows I've ever seen because they'll, they'll do genres all across the board. So it's really more neat. ambitious than a prime minister being forced to fuck a pig. Live more television. ambitious than that. Better than black mirror. Definitely. All right. I'm excited Freddie. At yeah. the end of every show. Mm-hmm. We say hi to our Beelzebubs. They are producers of the show. Who wants to Thank read you for producing? Who would like to read them? I nominate Kelly. All right. All right, listeners, <laughs> patrons. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the program, Strange Days, and Buddy Cam. But now it's time to say goodbye. And I'm going to read your names to you in a very <laughs> nice way. Aww. First up, my wife, Elise Combrink. Thank you for making the food that I know you just made and that is waiting down there for me to eat with you. Ernest, Ernie, it's so good to know you. I enjoy seeing you at Horror Hound whenever I can. Amanda, hello. Thank you so much for the sweet birthday wish. I appreciate it. And uh, I can't wait to see you hopefully at Horror Hound. Uh, Mark Watts, it was great hanging out with you. I know we said that uh, last week, but it, that's the last time I've uh, seen you. So we've also seen him at Horror Hound. And yes, I don't. I don't. And at the flying I, yes, I have. Yes, that's right. Um, so I do hope to see you uh, again. Thank you for being a patron, Blake. What's up, man? Howdy, howdy in Texas. That's what you guys say, right? Howdy, howdy. Hope you're well, uh, Bill Farner. You are not in Texas, as far as I'm aware. He's in New and, York. He's not in New York. Uh, he's not in New York anymore. Is he in Texas? I don't learn. Bill is in this country, and that's all you need to know. Well, he's, he's in an undisclosed location. Bill, wherever you are, I'm glad that you're here with us. Tree and Alex, you guys, you're so fun. Miss you guys. Uh, thank you. Jeff L. Jeff L. Jeff with the big L. <laughs> Howdy. Big L energy. Howdy is what they say in Texas, but that's what Blake just told me. So I'll say it to you, even though you're not in Texas or wherever you are. I don't know. Maybe you are. I own a good one. Who I own a to you? great one. You want, you want to do it again? Yeah. Since we kind of stumbled over each other. I own a good one. I own a good one. You said good one. And then I would. <laughs> What's mind. going on? Who's on first? Oh, Am I right? I, I, I not a sophisticated. Brandon and Emily. <laughs> <laughs> Love you guys. You guys are awesome. I've uh, been enjoying. Uh, uh, we've been enjoying the Jeopardy on on Netflix, the Jeopardy collection. Watching uh, Austin uh, work his his uh, his adorable little curly head away through a bunch of other people. So uh, let me know what you think, what you thought about Austin. I'm sure you uh, you have thoughts. Adam Ingram. Good day. Good day. Good day to you. And I don't mean it in the angry way, like good day to you. I mean good day. Good day, sir. Bill is Taylor. it a day for being good or a day that is good or is it shut the fuck up Gandalf you're being a dick it's uh yeah just Gandalf Bill Chandler Bill <laughs> I enjoy you and thank you for that Bill when you're here I hope to see you again your family on Thursday. <laughs> I'll bring some breadsticks and, s- and some salad to you Endless. not as much salad as I used to bring <sighs> <laughs> it's based on the last time I went to Olive Garden. Blaine Turner. Blaine. 
if I go to Olive Garden, I'll get you something if you like. Yeah, what is your oh. favorite entree at, at Olive Garden, Blaine? He's in Texas and it's snowing in Texas right now. Oh, Can howdy. Look. It's so, snowing in Texas sounds like a Brooks and Dunn song. <laughs> a Christmas song? Yeah, it'd be one of their... A, a Christmas yeah, country snowing song. Snowing in Christmas. It would be... Um, just Luke and Bach, Texas, but they changed the lyrics to, they put jingle bells in it and they changed the lyrics to uh, that other thing we talked about. Yes. Where, where That's are exactly we on what it is. <laughs> so Melissa. Our, our Texan friends tell us that you're okay, that you know how to react to snow. <laughs> they shoot at it. And start a <laughs> recall election for fucking Ted. I kid, I kid. I love Texas. Alyssa, hello. Alyssa. My friend, friend of the show, friend of me personally, and mm-hmm. each one of us individually and as a group and in all ways. A role model. <laughs> uh, I, I enjoy seeing uh, your Instagram pictures of the walks you guys take out in, out in the uh, wilderness. It's not wilderness, I know, but it's wooded. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Monica, what's up? Hey girl, hey. It was also good to hang with you on New Year's. I hope you pop into another um, meetup uh, when I'm on. What? We're just laughing at you because you're being silly. Oh, I got you. Brian. Brian. Brian, what's up? You are <coughs> second to the last name on the list, but not second or least. Second to least or least. I think you're if neither of those. when one of us inevitably gets dementia Kelly. that we're we're gonna just read our patrons names in a like a rocking chair person a woman man yeah. camera there'll be a, tv there'll be a brian a, monica a perpetually half finished jigsaw puzzle in front of us so it's amy yeah yes <laughs> she's the only one that survived and then newest to the list but with us for a while carla hi carla Thanks for being with us. Your first pre- name is the same name as my favorite character on Cheers. That's right. I appreciate your patronage as I do all of our patrons and your listenership as I do all of our listeners. So anyway, that was a good show, you guys. Yeah. Good that was work. was really fun. Thank yeah, you good time. for bringing joy into my life as Kel- you guys do every Sunday. Kelly talked about food. I'm hungry. Oh, me too. I'm starving. Mm. Okay. Okay. We're going to do lunch. We'll talk right. later. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Daughter.